Hello, everyone. I'm Harvey Brownstone, and today's guest is an internationally acclaimed intuitive, medium, life coach, animal communicator, educator, and author. For over 30 years, she's been giving readings and intuitive sessions, basing her work on physics by tuning into the universe's energy, frequencies, and vibrations to develop, inform, and utilize her spiritual senses. Her abilities are truly remarkable. She helps us connect with deceased loved ones, as well as with living people who are unable to communicate due to an illness such as Alzheimer's or being in a coma. She helps people communicate with their beloved pets, both living and deceased. And she's a renowned horse whisperer. As a medical intuitive, she can scan a person's physical body, including the chakras or energy centers, and find the sources of stuck energy, which, as she says, can cause issues in our tissues and is the source of illness, injury, and disease. She's written three best-selling books entitled The Cowgirl Shaman Way, Seven Easy Steps to Develop Your Intuitive Ability, Intuitive Communication, Communicating with Those Who Cannot, and The Physics of Mediumship. And now she can be seen in the brand new documentary miniseries entitled Paul T. Goldman, airing on the Peacock Network. The series is based on Mr. Goldman's book entitled Duplicity, A True Story of Crime and Deceit. It follows Mr. Goldman's efforts to uncover the truth about the woman he married, leading him into a labyrinth of fraud, deception, and criminality. Here's the trailer. I'm a regular guy that got caught up in extraordinary circumstances. This story is as accurate as it is unbelievable. I couldn't make this up. It happened to me. Paul, is this what happened? It's all been put in the book. I'm a single dad raising my son, Johnny. I always brought Johnny with me on my first dates. Then I came across a woman, family-oriented, stay-at-home mom. Audrey? Let's cut there. How does that feel, Paul? He's the main guy. He's going to play himself. Guilty as charged, Your Honor. Wow, that's weird. Action. Shortly after we were married, she was trying to fleece Paul out of money. What'd you do? I'm getting a psychic reading. I'm Terry J. I'm in pet psychic. I'm sensing that this is bigger than we think. What? I said that. That started the discoveries Holy. of her secret double life. She had a secret phone and she had secret addresses. This is the spot. This woman must be stopped. Thanks. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. I went and paid a visit to the FBI. In this story, every time you turn over a rock, I'm the warrior now. You'll find several more pebbles. <laughs> I got goosebumps. I'm in full stealth mode. This case haunts me. It started off here and it just went here. Beam me up, Scotty. I'm in the twilight zone. I don't know that it makes No, 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 no. This is the script now. Don't worry. It'll be great. Our guests' readings and interactions with Mr. Goldman were instrumental in his eventual realization that his new bride was not who or what she pretended to be and that his marriage was nothing more than a sham. The information that our guest shared with Mr. Goldman motivated him to transform himself from a wimp to a warrior. I'm delighted to welcome a very special human being, Terry J, to our show. Terry, thank you so much for joining us. It's really an honor to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Terry, before we talk about the miniseries, I want to ask you about your work. You are first and foremost an intuitive. Now, everyone has intuition, but how do we know when we can trust it? You know, that's a really great question. What I have found is that as you're just starting to mentally form a question, you've already been sent the answer. And when people get that stuff really, really fast, that's when they don't trust it. And truly, that's when they need to trust it. it you know, mentally, it sounds like this. Should, oh, I would, oh, should I? Oh, that fast you get the information back. And that, that's the same thing when you're communicating with animals or people and pets on the other side. So it's the speed that things come because it's all telepathic communication too, besides, you know, being intuitive. So 
People just need to learn to listen faster. You've said many times that we have to get out of our own way and not overthink things. But are we supposed to be logical, rational human beings and use our intelligence when we make decisions? Absolutely. I would never argue that. The, the problem is, is that we're born with five senses, intuition, clairvoyance, clairsentience, clairaudience, and claircognizance, clair just meaning clear. And we're born with these other senses that we turn off in childhood. So in order to use them, we just need to turn them back on. And, and it's pretty easy to do that. And again, getting out of your own way and not having any preconceived notions is one of the best things that you can do. Well, how can a person tell if they're overthinking things and getting in their own way? Most people do that because they're trying to, you know, overthink things when they should just kind of go with what their gut tells them. And I'm using that specifically because our third chakra is where our stomach is. And behind the stomach is a bundle of nerves that's like a microwave dish, you know, where it receives information. And we can also send information out there too, but we receive information through that nerve bundle. And that's the stuff we really want to trust. When we get a gut feeling about something, that's when you want to trust it. Your work is based on physics, energy, vibrations, and frequencies that the universe emits. Do physics experts agree that what you do stems from the science of physics? The couple that I've been able to talk to just kind of roll their eyes and go, of course, of course it's physics. You know, they're, you know, excited about someone that is is doing this stuff that can seem so weird and woo-woo. And it's not, it is. It's energy, frequency, and vibration. It's really interesting too, because the human body emits frequencies. And those can be charted. One of the therapies that I use when I get injured or something is called microcurrent therapy. And that uh, replicates the frequency of healthy tissue. So it puts the healthy vibrations and frequencies back into your body so that your body can heal. Terry, what's your understanding of what happens to our souls after we die? We just become non-physical. You know, people have a hard time with this. We're only 99% energy and 1% physical. So when we leave our little meat suits behind, we return to being pure positive energy. Now, nothing negative can go to the other side because it's not a vibrational match to source energy or God. And so people on the other side, they, they can only see the happy stuff that happens to us. One of the really good examples of that is when people say, oh, I miss you. They're talking to their loved ones on the other side. They go, oh, I miss you so much. They can't hear you. They can't hear you because you're not a vibrational match to them. But if you say, I love you, they get that immediately. When we die, are we reunited with our loved ones? Oh my God, yes. It's incredible. It's really incredible. When my mom passed, she woke me up and she said, I did it. I left my body. And I, I said, I said, you did? And I said, she goes, it's amazing. And then she socked me. She used to hit me right in my bicep. And I said, why do you hit us there? You know, us, us kids. She goes, because it doesn't show. I mean, that's what a stinker my mom is. <laughs> anyway, she said, I've got your pig. I said, what? She goes, remember when you had a pig? I said, yeah. She goes, I got your pig. And then she starts naming off all my horses that I haven't even thought about in 30 years. And, and she says, they're all here. She says, and I'm not afraid either. So she was reunited with all my animals, all my horses. And she goes, my family's here. And I said, yeah, she goes, they look good. I mean, it was so cute the way she was saying it. So she actually gave me, you know, absolute confirmation on, on everything that I had believed up until her passing and just reaffirmed, you know, where I was, you know, going with it. So, uh, you know, it was, it was really fun to communicate with her. And we have coffee together every morning, eight o'clock. So it's fun. It, it's fun to know they're still here. They're just non-physical. That's always been my sense. Do you believe in reincarnation? Yes, absolutely. Because it's physics. It's based in physics. You can't destroy energy. You can only change it. So, you know, we get out of these bodies and our soul or spirit goes to the other side for a while. And then we decide how we want to come back and we decide what challenges we want in our new life. 
which sometimes you think, what, what were you thinking to pick that stuff? You know, really hard stuff. But those are opportunities for growth. That's why we pick them. And then we come back into physical form. And the one rule that I have found out about reincarnation is with God, all things are possible. So our pets can even do walk-ins. Our pets do walk-ins all the time. I think walk-ins happen to humans too, but those are the people that usually end up in this psych ward. But our energy just wants to come back so that we can create because you can't create from non-physical. You've got to have a body and a brain and hands and arms and legs and everything to create. So that's why we choose to come back. I've often read that our deceased loved ones try to send us signs and signals to help us. How can we learn to recognize those signs so we don't miss them? Oh, they're too simple. That's why we miss them. My mom leaves me feathers all the time. They leave feathers. They leave pennies from heaven. Some people point out ladybugs because, you know, maybe that was their favorite thing or dragonflies or hummingbirds. They're just little signs all the time. And I've had people say, oh, yes, my mom came back as a cardinal. No, no, the cardinal is the messenger. Okay. It's just a message of I love you, you know, because, you know, you're not paying attention to her. So they have to send little messengers. So they always give us signs all the time. And what about our pets? What happens to the souls of our pets when they die? Same thing. We all go to the same place because we're all the same energy. We're basically God or source energy in a physical form. You know, we're not separate. We're all connected. And so our animals usually try to find a new physical form and come back right away. And so I have I have clients that they put their dog down on a Tuesday and Thursday they go to the sh- go to the shelter and pick up a puppy and they get freaked out because within a few days that puppy starts acting like the dog they just lost. And they're really confused and upset and like what the heck is going on here? And so what I tell them is you have a walk in. So the spirit of the dog that passed has walked into your new dog so that they can be with you in the physical plane. Oh, that's just beautiful. Of all the animals you've worked with, you have a very special connection with horses. Can you tell me a bit about that? Well, I've been a horse person my whole life. And for most of my life, I've been a professional horse person, meaning that I've made my living with horses. I did a horseback therapy program with disabled kids for 35 years. And that's how I found out I was intuitive and and telepathic because I heard a nonverbal child speak to me. But I love doing readings on horses. They're so incredible. They're so amazing. And they're very specific, you know, about what they want, where they hurt, how to address their pain. You know, they, they really are high maintenance. They're the, they're the divas of the animal world. They really are. Because they've got to have chiropractic. They have to have AccuScope, which is the microcurrent therapy I talked about. But they just give us so much. They just do. They heal us. Well, I was just going to ask you that, Terry. uh, Do you think that animals have healing energy? Oh, absolutely. If you think about a horse, if you stand sort of chest to chest with them, their heart chakra radiates about four feet out of their body. To just stand under a horse with your arms around their neck, oh my goodness, it's like nirvana. Because they just give you all that unconditional love. They're just incredible animals. I know. I feel that from from every animal I've ever had the privilege of living with. Oh, yeah. They just, they're here. They're here as our helpers, teachers, and healers. That's what their, I think their role is. And, you know, and the big thing is they teach us about unconditional love. That's the main thing that they're here to teach us. And we don't get that. We just don't get that. I want to ask you now, Terry, about spiritual guides. When you do a reading for someone, can you receive messages from our spiritual guides to help us with decisions and choices that we have to make in life? Oh, goodness. Yes, I love doing that. I always say my TV show should be called I Can't Make This Stuff Up, but I want to use the other S word, you know, the bad one, (laughs) because the stuff is so specific to the person. And I don't differentiate between getting it from my guides or their guides. I just, you know, I I just don't pay attention. I just listen. My job is to be a listen, a listener and a translator. That's what my job is. And so it's really amazing. And I think guides are kind of a 
personification of parts of our own personality with a direct contact to the other side. I really think that's what they are. And so they take on personalities that are parts of your own personality. So they're really great. I have so much fun with my guides. Whenever I'm in the kitchen, I hear this lady with a Minnesota accent and everything's, oh, yeah, yeah, you betcha. You know, she's telling me how to do something in the kitchen. It's hilarious. I think that's just amazing. You know, I don't know if this sounds kind of weird to you, but to I've, me? Always, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I've always had the feeling that we're not really in charge of our lives and that we should just learn to surrender and let destiny take its course. Does that make sense to you? Oh, I want to give you a big hug. And then I want to give you a noogie at the same time. <laughs> you forget it. You're forgetting about the law of attraction. The law of attraction states what you think about to bring about. And so when we're not paying attention to the law of attraction, the law of attraction is going to bring you what you don't want. So if we repeat and, and embrace and state what we want as if we already have it, then that's how the universe provides. And so if you're not paying attention to the law of attraction and just kind of floating like you're describing, then you're going to get stuff you don't want because we are in charge of our own lives. People don't get this. We're the same energy as source. We're source energy in a meat suit, seriously. And, and if you think about the, the biology of this, we all have mitosis in the cells. Well, mitosis is the creation of energy. So if you're creating energy in your cells, you're God, but just for you. So you're the creator of your own life. And we create with our thoughts and our feelings. I have a lot of clients that say, you know, I've really tried to listen to you and I've tried to follow the law of attraction. It's not working. And when this happens, it's because their thoughts are right on target about what they want. And they're stating it as if they already have it. But their feelings are, you're a piece of crap. You don't deserve it. You'll never achieve anything. They're hearing all of those old tapes from when they were a child. And so they have to work on embracing and healing their inner child in, in order to heal so that they can have a match to their thoughts and their feelings. And then they can be a magnificent manifester. Well, I think you've really hit on something very significant, the distinction between thinking and feeling and how we have to align those. That really resonates with me. Thank you for that. Sure. Yeah, because we're taught you know, we don't have the best parents in the world, you know, not everybody does. And even even if it's not our parents, even if our parents are positive and encouraging, and it, we still have people in our life that'll take our power, it can be siblings, it can be teachers, they say you can't, you're an idiot, you can't do that, you'll never amount to anything. And we get all of this negative stuff into us that we actually hold on to because we believe in in some level. And so it's very important to get rid of all that negative crap. And one of the ways it works really good is think who took your power, write them a letter, tell them off, and then burn the letter while you say out loud, nobody is ever going to treat me like that again. And that's how we can take our power back. And then we have to write down all of the lies that we've been told about who and how we are. And then I, I tell people, do that on one piece of paper. And on the piece of paper next to it, write the opposite of what you've been told and then you burn the one with all the negative stuff on it oh, i love that i'm getting so much out of this you have no idea <laughs> i want to ask you terry about your work as a medical intuitive how did you come to discover that blocked energy can be the source of illness and disease well you know disease is issues in the tissues again we're 99 percent energy so, I mean, unless you need some life-saving medication or surgery because you were in a car accident, everybody's first approach should be energy healing. And energy healing is very simple. I give out the instructions free to anybody who requests them, and you can do it yourself. So if you're sick because you're disempowered and you go to an energy healer, so to speak, and they say, lie on the massage table, I will heal you. You still don't get your power back. That's why it's so important to do this yourself. And it's done just with visualization and intention. That's it. That's pretty simple. 
Yeah, it's a, it's amazingly simple when you explain it. So when you're <laughs> when you're scanning a person's chakras, can you do that even if they're not physically with you, like over the phone or oh, on oh, Zoom? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I do remote viewing. Remote viewing is a hoot. I had a an energy healer that worked with me when I first got started, and she would ask me to look at stuff over the phone. And, you know, if she was looking at buying a home or buying a hotel, I would do remote inspections on the facility. And the stuff that I got was, it was really fun too, because sometimes she would have me look at it before she had a real inspection with an inspector. And sometimes she would have me do it after. And a lot of times I caught stuff the inspectors missed. So it was pretty interesting. But anyway, yeah, I can, I do remote viewing all the time. I do that to help find lost pets. It's really interesting what you get because I, you know, I'll do map dowsing too, which is looking for the animal's energy on a map. I love doing it because again, it's every reading I do is like opening a Christmas present. I don't know what's going to be in there. I don't know what we're going to find. I don't know how it's going to help. So I just love doing it. Well, one of the most important things you do is to help people communicate with those who cannot communicate in the ordinary way because they're suffering from an illness or injury. Let's assume you're with someone who's got Alzheimer's or dementia. How do you tap into that place in their soul where they can communicate with you? Well, in my second book, Intuitive Communication, I teach people how to do this. And I go through all of the medical conditions and all of the different levels of consciousness, I guess you would call them, that, that are they're medically based. And then I go... Okay, just look for three these three things when you're doing it. You know, are you connecting to their higher self where everything is happy and positive? Are you connecting to sort of like the next level down, which would be they have an awareness of things but can't communicate? And then the bottom level would be something that's very temporary, like anesthesia or an induced coma, those kinds of things. So you pick up on the different level of their awareness. And that's really what I tune into to share information. And I've had some miracles happen with that. Oh, my goodness. One guy I talked to, it was really funny. It was to do a lost cat reading. And as I'm dialing, I hear cat found. And I thought, oh, okay, well, I'll just check in with her and refund her payment. And and, and I get her on the phone. I go, I hear you found your cat. She goes, just this second. And I went, what? She goes, the cat just this second came in the door while the phone was ringing. I said, okay, but I heard the cat was found. And I said, but I'm hearing man sick, man sick. And I said, is that someone in your family? She says, oh, yes. She says, uncle is in the hospital with a ruptured brain aneurysm. And you know what the survival rate on that is? Like slim to none. And I said, do you want to talk to him? She said, I would love to. And they were trying to get them to disconnect life support, you know, because they figured, you know, he's he's not going to make it. And it was so cute. The minute I tuned in to him by using his name, he's sitting on a fence. And I went, well, that's for this dummy who has trouble getting stuff, which mean, meant to me he, he could he hasn't been determined if he's going to stay or go. So I talked to him and he was so specific about things like, OK, pay my bills. They're over there on the table. He described the table to me and I was telling her about it. She goes, yeah, I mean, vinyl tablecloth under a window. I mean, it's so bizarre. And and anyway, I asked him, I said, do you want your family to try energy healing? And he said, oh, yeah, sure. So I referred them to an energy healer who does remote work. He woke up out of the coma and went home. (laughs) And this is a guy... They were trying to get the family to disconnect life support. So you've got to be careful when you do that stuff. But you don't do the energy healing yourself. You refer people to a healer? In in cases like that, yes. Because it would be unethical for me to go, oh, yeah, let's schedule another appointment. And I'll take your money again. and do the energy. No, I, I would always refer out. It's unethical to do that. You know, you can't say, let's book another appointment. No, that's terribly unethical. And lots of people do it. So I referred out that that situation. I think it's more important. I mean, if somebody's conscious and aware and, and I'm doing a reading for them, I'm going to send them the instructions. Sometimes I need to put them in a preparation H box in order for them to get it. But 
but I usually, usually just once they get the instructions and start working on them themselves, they get it. And they just say, oh my goodness, this has just been incredible. Terry, I've read that you will not work with the police. Is that right? That's absolutely correct. <laughs> I got in trouble one time because I was at my chiropractor's office and he said, hey, you getting anything on that double homicide? And I went, hmm. And then I just rattled off a whole bunch of details that I got just from, you know, kind of tuning into it through him. And I got home and the sheriff is at my door waiting for me <laughs> because I had all kinds of details that were not known publicly. So I tried to work on that case for a while, but I mean, he, I was, he was really relieved, the sheriff was, once he realized that, you know, I'm an intuitive, that's what I was getting. So but I did work on that case, but I can't tune into that negativity. The only way you're going to really get resolution is to tune into the perpetrator. And they're like bottom feeders. They're like, ugh, ugh. no, I just can't do it. It makes me physically ill to do it. So I, that's the one that, that and predictions are the two things that I will not do. I do everything else, which makes it really fun. So you're very sensitive to the toxicity of people yeah. who are, are evil. Absolutely. I can spot a pedophile at 50 paces, really. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And, and I can't even be around music because, because it's like the last straw. So I never listen to music at all. Why? It's the last straw. There's so much coming in to my noggin all the time that the the, the music is is like it it just it's like a disresonance within me, where you know if you pluck the wrong strings on a guitar and you hear that twang, that music does that to me through my whole body. Oh, well, that's so interesting. Now, Terry, as you know, there are a lot of people out there who claim to be psychic mediums. And they charge big bucks to very vulnerable people who are grieving the tragic loss of a loved one, but they're con artists. What's the best way to know if a psychic medium is legit? Well, I would go off of price because people who truly want to be of service have low rates. I mean, I've had people say, oh, you've been on the show. Now you should raise your rates. I can't do that. I have so many horse poor clients that if I raised my rates even $25 or something, you know, my rates are 50 and 90 half hour hour. If I raised my rates, I'd probably lose, you know, at least a good third of my clients. And, you know, this, this is being of service. That's the first thing. And the second thing is, and I really want to caution people about this. No one needs help crossing over. Everyone, everyone who is dead, you know, has left their body immediately instantly goes to the other side no one needs help crossing over no one and and people prey on that you know they'll they'll be told your mother hasn't crossed over and for maybe uh five thousand dollars i can get them to the other side that's total bs no one needs help getting to the other side if i get a client that says you know i was working with this other medium and i spent all my money with them and so i'm coming to you because your rates are lower so can you see if my mom made it to the other side? I have one question for them. Who is the DA in your town? Because you need to go to that DA and file fraud charges against that medium. You do. And, and yet there's still people that are legitimate mediums that will tune into the shed off negative energy garbage that somebody shed off when they went to the other side and they will share that information as if it is how the person is now. They don't have discernment. Discernment is the most important thing to develop when you're doing this work. And I, I stress that in all of my books, that you have to be able to tell the difference between positive and negative energy. And when, like what I said, when someone dies, everything negative gets shed off. Pain, suffering, anguish unfinished business, regrets, all that stuff gets shed off and left behind. Now, if you're a medium or a sensitive, you can tune into that negative energy garbage. And because it looks like, feels like, and sounds like the deceased, you might be tempted to share that negativity, believing that it's them. It's not. You will never get anything negative from somebody that has, has crossed over. Never. I can't stress that enough. If I, if I need to get them like an apology or something so that they can heal, I tell them at the moment of their passing, they, there was a humongous smack on the forehead where they realized how they screwed up. 
and they're they're you know apologizing to you for what they did to you but i'm very specific where i'm getting that information not they're 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 on the other side wringing their hands going oh i screwed up nope doesn't happen that's really important to know. So tell me, when you meet someone, can you tell if their intuitive abilities are well developed? Yes. Oh, all the time. I, there's so many times people go, "Yes, I wanted to have a reading." Like, why are you calling me? And they go, "What? Why are you calling me? You don't need me. You're already doing this." Oh, really? You think so? <laughs> yeah. Get my book. Get my first book, and you know, you just need ethics. You need to develop your discernment abilities, but you're receiving information. You're like a cell phone tower. You don't need me. And and really, I sometimes I'll stop the reading and go, you don't need me. Uh-uh, I'm not doing this. So I have those things called ethics. Yeah, well, that's very, very clear. You're well known for that. I, I asked you that question because I'm frequently told that I have very advanced intuitive skills. So that's why I wondered, can you sense anything in talking with me? Oh, yeah, you're very intuitive. You're incredibly intuitive. You just don't trust it. But, but you have to work, and I, I hope this isn't too personal, you've got a lot of crap from your childhood you got to get rid of, because that's <laughs> blocking you. But you already know that. So do the letter writing, take your power back. And then, and then you know, study, study the first book. And, and I can send you the ebook too, if you want it. No, I have all your books. I read them oh, in preparation do? for the interview. Oh, yeah. Oh, so oh my I'm goodness, you. you did homework. I did my homework. Yeah. Well, oh, I'm so honored you did that. Well, it's very important to me, and I'm I'm quite an admirer of your work. Oh, thank you. So, Terry, let's talk now about the Paul T. Goldman miniseries. I understand that it was you who told Mr. Goldman way back when you started working with him that he should keep track of everything that was happening so he could write a book about it. What made you tell him that? I just heard it from guidance. I just got that. Because to me, it wasn't just a matter of that he, you know, he was married to somebody who wasn't who they said they were, and he needed a divorce. I was getting that this was very convoluted, involved, other people were involved, bad things were happening. I really just got the whole the whole nine yards for him. Well, when I was watching the miniseries, it occurred to me that before marrying somebody, we should probably all consult an expert <laughs> like you to tell us if we found the right partner. Do you agree? Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I do that. I do that with people. I, I say, listen, do your vision board, you know, based on the law, the, the law of attraction and the, the movie, the, the secret, put on your vision board. I'm in a loving, committed relationship with a wonderful person who loves, honors and cherishes me. They are and then describe them happy, sexy, balanced, wealthy, clean, cooperative, funny, kind, whatever's important to you and put that on your vision board. And that way you will you'll, you'll be able to manifest your perfect partner. But not only that. You'll you'll really know from the first couple dates whether this person is is right for you or not. You'll know that. It's just that so many people nowadays meet online and you're dealing sure. with somebody who's created a profile that may or may not reflect who they really are. They might have a criminal record. They might already sure. be married. They might be bankrupt. Right. We don't know anything about them. They might not be uh, legally allowed to live in this country. Sure. Uh, I, I don't know if you know, but I'm a retired criminal court judge and I've seen all of this. Oh my what goodness. Can, uh, what can happen to people who trust someone that they met online? And so it occurred to me when I was watching the miniseries, really, if someone could consult a person like you who really has well-developed abilities they could save themselves an enormous amount of grief if they end oh my up goodness, yeah. with, but, with the wrong person. But I have rules for internet dating too that I share with my clients. Don't date long distance. It's, it's just not going to work out. And you won't be able to go to their place and meet their friends and their family. And I tell them, if you connect to somebody and you want to meet them, you need to meet them within 48 hours because otherwise we end up falling in love with a fantasy. It's not real. So unless you can meet somebody in a public place within 48 hours, just stop it. Just quit dating them. You know, don't date them because people do, they create fantasies 
over somebody that they really know nothing about. And, and as long as you're meeting them in a public place, you're going to be pretty safe and do two or three or four dates like that. The other thing is, is once you feel comfortable using your intuition, you want to be able to go to their place and you want to be able to have them come to your place, you know, when you know it's safe. And that way you're getting a, a, an idea, you know, if you go to their place and there's women's things there, women's clothing, they're probably married or they're living with, you know, a, you know, a female. So those, those things are important to find out. Okay, so back to the series, Paul T. Goldman, you appear in the documentary portions, and then in the reenactment scenes, you're portrayed by the wonderful actress, Dee Wallace. Oh, God, isn't she great? She appeared on our show a while back. What did you think of her performance? Oh, I thought it was fabulous. The only, my, the only complaint I had was the clothing. I thought, where did they get that stuff? Goodwill? You know, at that time, which is 2005, is when I did my first reading for Paul, I would wear knit shirts that had horses all over them. And of course, you know, nothing's changed. But I could have sent them the shirts, you know, where they could have dressed her the way that I did. The, the background they had was perfect. You know, horse lamps and horse pictures and, all, and a, a cowhide chair, which I have one. You know, that part they did really good. But as far as her clothing, it was abominable. The coolest part about D though, she does all this. She's an intuitive. She does energy healing. You know, <laughs> she's great. We oh, had so much amazing. fun together. They took, they flew me down to Burbank, Burbank, and then we went out to Pomona to film in the end of June last year. Oh God, it was so fun. It was just a riot. Well, I love Dee very, very much. She's did special. you did you have any worries or concerns about appearing in the miniseries? No, and I should have. I really should have. I figured these guys are up front and they're honest and they're going to portray this well. And <laughs> not so much. Tell me more about that. Did you have input in the script for the show? No, none whatsoever. None whatsoever. I did say, you know, I quit using the word pet psychic probably 2017. I quit using that word because... Psychic means not of the physical sciences, and I want to be more science-based, physics-based. And so I asked him to, you know, just always call me an intuitive, which we see how that went. Well, are you disappointed with the finished product of the show? Because that's the impression I'm getting. I can't talk bad about the show. Okay. But, <laughs> but you didn't love it. Um, episode three was good. <laughs> what's the feedback you're receiving so far about the show oh it's so funny i actually had a guy he saw the third episode and asked for a reading and then he, he finished watching it and said please cancel my appointment i've seen enough and I went, oh my lord you're believing what's in a tv show okay i don't want to work with you anyway so that did happen once well so given that what do you think is the most important message or theme that you want the public to get out of the miniseries? Just to use your intuitive ability. If it looks like a duck and sounds like a duck and waddles like a duck, it's probably a duck. You know, there were a lot of social cues that Paul missed in his relationship. And, you know, my heart just goes out to him. He's still looking for love. And he's such a nice guy. Oh, my God. He's just such a nice guy, you know. And and he really deserves to find somebody that will love him and appreciate him for the unique individual that he is. Yeah, we all do. Have you had other clients whose stories you think would make great books or movies? Oh, my goodness. Yes, absolutely. But I haven't I haven't gotten that to, to tell him that. You know, truthfully, Paul's story kind of got to the realm of what I would call police work. And and I really should have just stopped at some point and said, no, I'm, I'm not doing this. But it was so interesting. And I just really wanted to help him. He's such a nice guy. And uh, so I did, you know, continue to help him as, as much as I could. Some of the other stories are in incredible success stories. So, you know, people only like stuff that's, you know, fear-based and scary and all that they don't like to hear all of the the happy things like the people that 
were diagnosed with cancer, given six months to live and, you know, and I helped them with energy healing and they're still here 15 years later. So those are the stories that, that should be out that aren't. And hopefully if, you know, when I get my show, we'll be able to show some of those stories because I think they're just really, really important. You know, people have so, so much, they hate cancer and they call themselves cancer survivors. And, and it's like, you know, by saying the C word, you're inviting it back. Hello. You know, they should just be healthy. I'm so grateful I'm healthy, not a survivor or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do understand that. So your TV show that you're planning to get, will you be doing readings and teach people how to develop their intuitive skills? Uh, yes and yes, I hope. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really excited about it. I'm actually in a discussion right now with, with one production company. So we'll see where it goes. It's, I'm kind of holding my breath you know, to see if they actually come through. Well, I hope that the lessons that you learned from your involvement with Paul T. Goldman with that show will stand you in good stead because it is important for you to have creative control. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and, I, and I definitely would do that. It's just that, you know, I've been friends with these guys for years and you just don't, you, you just don't think it's going to turn out the way that it does. You know? But it's a show business. It's 90% yes. business. Right, right. And right. you're so pure. You know, your oh. spirit is so pure. Your energy is very positive. And it's very, I was going to say naive. But I, what I mean to say is that for show business, you're not strategic in terms of viewership or revenue. You're about the truth of the message. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And I, and I have good people behind me now that are going to make sure that that the truth gets out and the truth gets on gets in into the series you know the series that i'm going to do i want to tell our viewers that you can learn more about terry j by her books and schedule intuitive and coaching sessions with her by going to her official website terryj.com well terry i have only one more question for you and it's this are you ready yes the world is in such a dark place these days in so many ways. What do you think has to happen for humanity to elevate itself spiritually, to be more attuned to our higher selves? You know, that's a really good question, but I want to gently and lovingly disagree. Bad news sells because fear sells. And we have to understand the balance of positive and negative energy. There's an incredible book called Power Versus Force. And in this book, the author tells us that one positive person, kind of an avatar, like a Jesus kind of a person, and they do exist. I've met some of them. They counterbalance the negativity of millions of people. They counterbalance the negativity. And I think that people should delve into this and know that your job is not to worry about all of the negative stuff that's going on. Your job, just by being a positive, happy person, can counterbalance the negativity of thousands and thousands of negative people. And so we can, we can focus on the negative that's going on, or we can just choose to have our own happy lives. You know, people worry about politics. There's very little that happens in politics that affects individuals, very little. Right. And yet we spend so much time, you know, did that SOB get indicted yet? You know, we're focusing on it. And, and it's a big waste of time. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of our energy. Just by being a happy person, you know, following your passions, doing what you enjoy, you're counterbalancing the negativity of thousands and thousands of negative people. So it's enough. It's enough. So do you watch the news? No. No. So that's a good way to remain positive is not to absorb too much of this negativity that we get 24 hours a day on these news channels. Right. Right. Yeah. It, it, you can get overwhelmed with it. It's really funny because a lot of people that just are glued to the internet they're watching puppies. They're watching kitty cats. They're watching silly stuff. And, and they're not paying attention to the news. They can just as easily switch 
and and go watch silly videos and fun videos as as they can watching the news because like i shared you know unless you're in a war torn region or you know unless you're in some place where there's been some sort of weather tragedy or chemical spills i've heard about that one too unless you're right there most of this stuff doesn't impact your life it just doesn't so each one of us individuals is given the responsibility to have a happy life and create your own happy life using the law of attraction. And when you are choosing your circle of people that you want around you, the energy of the people around you, do you look for people who emit positivity and a good, healthy perspective on the world? You know, I have... I have them in all, I would say all phases of life, you know, where they're, they're suffering, they're in pain, and maybe I can help them just a little bit, you know, with, with some of the information that I have, you know, this is good healing information for everybody. And, and so if I can, you know, be like Johnny Appleseed sprinkling apple seeds all over the place or or, you know, just trying to get them to understand the energy healing aspects and change their life, then then I, I, I'm not picky. I'm not like, no, you can't be friends with me because you're negative. No, I'm, I'm just not like that. Well, I got to tell you, Terry, it's been an incredibly powerful and illuminating experience having this opportunity to talk with you about what you do. I, I feel the energy, the healing nature of what you're saying penetrating right through the screen. I want to thank you so much for what you do, for your books, for appearing on the show, and for taking the time to talk with me. Oh, I'm honored. I'm honored. I love to help people. And it's and I mean, I want people to develop their own abilities, which is why I've written three books. I'm on the fourth one now, which is about dog communication. So I'm doing dog communication, then I'm going to do horse communication, and then kitty cats, and then I got a couple novels. Just you know, waiting to get out. So that'll be fun. Well, I want you to know you are welcome back on our show anytime, Terry. I think you are amazing. And I love the fact that you so willingly share your gifts and your perspective and your energy and your soul with the rest of us because we need you. But they're not gifts. These are abilities everybody has. And that's why if if I, you know, I've had people write you read these books and going, Terry, I'm making my living doing this. I'm like, all right, good job. You know, people can do it. And, and you can pick whatever part of it that you want to do too. So the, and it has the ripple effect. I've had people say, aren't you worried about competition? No, I'm not worried about competition. You know, if I teach somebody that, you know, that's in Maine how to do horse communication, you just think of the benefit those horses in Maine are going to have. Because their owners are going to go, wait a minute, I think my horse needs a chiropractor. That's why he's bucking. You know, you're going to get you're going to get the, the word spread about how to help. And that, I think, is is my my, my it's my big plan is to really spread the word to get more people doing this. Well, what you're doing may not be a gift, but you are a gift to us. No, no. So thank you again for appearing on our show, Terry. Thank you so much for having me, Harvey. It was really great. Our guest has been the internationally renowned intuitive medium, life coach, animal communicator, educator, and author, Terry J. My name is Harvey Brownstone. Thank you to our producer, Steve Silver, my wonderful managers, Rick and Robin at the Marcelli Company in Hollywood, and my entire team at the XPTV1 network in the UK. Thank you all for joining us. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out all the great interviews on the Harvey Brownstone Interviews YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when new videos are posted.